The dagger is one of the most effective weapons in close combat. Various literary sources have confirmed that from the Middle Ages right up to the late Middle Ages, the dagger was used in combat with the point aimed downwards. This position makes possible a whole range of circular contact and cutting movements. Adopting a crouch stance helps to give the weapon more power. Here we see a dagger with a long cross hilt. In contrast to this, we have the increased number of positions and moves that became known from the middle of the 16th century onwards. These fighting stances enabled a person to keep a training partner or opponent at a greater distance in a relatively simple and effective way. But it should be pointed out that possibilities of being able to control the other person were strictly limited. If you combine both positions, you'll quickly find out that both positions really complement each other. There are various ways of holding a dagger. This hold enables one to turn the dagger when carrying out various maneuvers. The way the dagger is held sees the index finger laid along the flat part of the blade. It's used to point when thrusting. Now the simple thrust and defensive stances. In order to achieve the longest effective range, the fist holding the dagger is extended to the front. This is the way the thumb should be used in a thumb grip. The thumb lies along the blade and the fingers of the hand lie behind the ring on the dagger's hilt. Now the other way around. The thumb is positioned behind the ring and the fingers are behind the crosspiece. Once again, we have the grip with the index finger lying along the flat part of the blade. In order to be able to demonstrate the effectiveness of a dagger of this kind, we'd like to point out that these weapons are blunt and are ideal for practice purposes. Each section of the dagger has its purpose. This is the blade which is used for cutting and strokes. Here we have the point used for thrusting and threatening with the point. The cross hilt or guard with the ring to protect one's hands which is used to get a partner or opponent under control and for thrusting. The grip and the pommel for exerting pressure, pulling or leverage. Tassilo has selected a foot stance which can be utilized in an extremely flexible way. Both legs are tensioned and the spinal column is pointed downwards to the floor. You have to have well-trained leg muscles in order to be able to carry out fast, precise and varied footwork. This is necessary for different qualities in defensive action and to help ward off attacks. In a primary defensive position, the body should be upright and the body weight divided equally between both legs. Beginners should be aware that the leg with which you are working should be placed behind and carry about 70% of the load. As you can see here, the front leg is slightly bent. The ability to take immediate defensive action should be possible in this position. Once again, a change back to a neutral basic position. Change of step. The other hand, not holding a weapon, can be held in readiness in this position. Folded across the chest or on the hips. Why do we mention in readiness? You can see why here. Rudolf leads with a thrust towards his opponent's hand, and if Tassilo doesn't take care, his hand will be injured. Rudolf can also carry out a blow. 
Tesla wears protective gloves just in case. No matter how short the dagger may be and how long the distance between the partners is, don't underestimate anything. Now we come to the steps used in footwork for avoiding and attacking which have precedence in this training film. A simple dagger or cross-shaped pattern has been laid out on the floor with sticky tape. Tassilo practices Knauf in Richtung Garde or Pommel in the direction of the on-guard position. The front leg is moved out of the neutral position and the rear leg follows. Tassilo practices a half or gathering step. Now a complete step. Here we have a step towards the left on guard position. Now a twisting half step to the left guard position. Tassilo now demonstrates a gliding step backwards. This lesson is often practiced by advanced students in order to enable, for instance, throwing the dagger when in a position that presents a disadvantage. Tassilo now demonstrates a dry exit or triangle step. This movement can be used to take avoiding action or launch an attack. One should imagine an attack, avoiding it and then countering. Now to the left guard position and to the point. Now the footwork used for various avoidance methods. Taking evasive action with the body to the right, followed by a dry exit to the left guard position. Now the opposite. Now we're going to show you low evasive action movements. You've got to have well-trained leg muscles for this. 